Hello everyone, welcome to another livecast. This livecast is coming to you from Poland. Me and Paul are sitting here having just been to Auschwitz. So this livecast is going to be a bit of a reflection session on what we've just witnessed. And I think perspective is going to be the big thing yeah. that comes out a lot today. A really, really emotional day. So many thoughts going through my head all, all throughout the tour. And I think just to sit here and I would have been and to just talk about about a few of the things that we both We're back feel. on the bay, back on the bay, yeah, and I'm not the bay rest time as well. Um, and I think yeah, it'd just be nice just to give a bit of a reflection on it, how it's affected us, and and yeah, just go from there. I think. Yeah, I think we just said before, and everybody's saying who's on the group, everybody should come here once in their life. Mm. Relative of it is that that's not going to happen, but there will be people listening that I think maybe we can just give a little bit of a flavour of. A bit of an insight of, of what it is, really. And yeah. what were you expecting, by the way? I spoke to a few people who have been, and they just said it's really sad. So, obviously, you know, it was going to be sad, but what <clears throat> what struck me most, what shocked me, was the cruelty of it. Okay, yeah, you know, you kind of knew that there were these big factories and they gassed a lot of people and killed, you know, a million people. As harrowing as that is, you kind of almost knew that. What I didn't know was just what went in to just making it the most miserable, unlivable nightmare of an experience for people. Mm. That's the thing that shocked me most, and that's the bit I wasn't expecting. I knew it was going to be sad, but I just, that whole thing of knowing what humans can do to other humans and and the cruelty of it, mm. I think was the thing that broke me most. It was um, so harrowing. It's almost as if, you know, sometimes you go with the movies and you, you see a you know, really weird horror film and you think, God, how did... How did the director even think of that? You know, it's that, but it really happened. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What about you? The first thing that that I was surprised at was I was expecting us to go into some fields and more fields and more fields, and then all of a sudden, like, go down a country lane and it'd open up and you'd have this kind of place. So I was really surprised when we went to Auschwitz first because we went to both concentration camps. Uh, the second one's Birkenau, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we went to both of them. But the first one, well, both of them actually, they're in the middle of a, like being in Liverpool or Manchester. or It's not yeah. like it's in... So you've just got people living around what happened and that was the first part that surprised me. Then the first visit was Auschwitz. I don't know what you felt like, but we put our earphones on and you kind of walk under a tunnel. Real. And it was eerie. Yeah. I don't know what you felt like, but it, I don't know what I was expecting at that point. You literally walk through a tunnel, I don't know, maybe for about three or four minutes, and you come underground and you come up, and it's a brand new tunnel. And I felt like it was a strange sensation. What? Yeah, no, 100%. I think that whole day just felt eerie. It's almost as if in the air, the buildings, everything around it, the atmosphere has known death and sadness and, and suffering. And you just get this weird feeling, I, th- I thought, throughout the whole day, that tunnel starting with, and you're just looking at the buildings and you just almost, you can almost still sense the sadness of the place of something that happened 80 years ago. Yeah. And one thing I, I, I thought was, was one of the most courageous things of the day. I was so shocked at listening about when the tours almost first opened. I think they opened in uh, 1947. Mm. So two years after the war had stopped, survivors from Auschwitz straight away had the courage to say, you know what, we're going to go back there and we're going to put on some sort of tour and we're going to share our story so that people will never forget what happened here. Mm. Which, like we said at the start, we think everyone should learn about that story. But you imagine to have the courage to go through maybe one, two, three, four years of suffering every night you've seen, and then I have to say, you know what, I need to go back there and make sure this mm. doesn't happen again, and I want to relive my experiences and, and be in the place that caused, caused me so much sadness, and I want to tell people every day, mm. and thankfully that story's been told and retold and retold, and, and that's obviously what we experience, <clears throat> but, you know, you, you talk about a purpose, we talk about it all the time, that was someone's purpose, who went through that yeah. suffering to think, you know what, my purpose is now is to make sure this story is told and no one will ever forget what happened there. So on the coach on the way down, it was a bit like, should you be going? 
what are you going for? What is it, you know, kind of, are you, is, is it a real life movie? That's, do you, do you get what I mean? So you can't say, oh, I want to go to Auschwitz. It doesn't sound right. But I think when you learn that actually the people and the survivors in there want you to go to Auschwitz to remember it, it changes that part and turns that on its head. Mm. And I think that was, that's, that's like quite an important point for people who may or may not may want to go but not sure whether they want to go is that actually as you said the survivors were like we can't forget about what's just happened there we want everybody to know about this forever mm. and so we're going to you know we're going to create a, memo a memorial and i just you, you you kind of walk in and the cobble streets are there mm. and you just think Wow, what went on? And there's about, is there about 40 blocks? You get a tour of about 40 blocks in Auschwitz, smaller than um, Birkenau. And they talk, they put you through different, um, yes. like, scenarios. And there was a part that I thought, oh, this is, and there, there was actually two blocks I went in and I thought, I might have just done enough here now. Mm -hmm. It was actually getting to me enough where I thought, I could probably just take or leave this now. But I'll be honest with you, I'm glad I didn't. Because the third block, I thought, was the worst block. And that was where... And this is the sad part, like, like you've been saying before and on here, is it's what they put you through as well as what they did, what they put them through. So, like, they made everybody think that they were coming to a better place. They owned a piece of property. Life was going to be better. Bring your best, you know, jewellery, your best pots and pans your best, best clothes, your best... They made them do all that so that they could take it off them. And in the third block, you when they show you all that, there was just everybody's shoes. Mm. And they were little shoes. And that was the part that I was like, Jesus, you know what I mean? That was the part that hit me probably more than any other. What was it like for you from a... Yeah, that bit, I mean, I just thought... That's what I mean, the cruelty for me to be calculated. You know, I think in that first wave, I'm sure he said that people actually paid for a ticket to go yeah. on the train, do you know what I mean? Tricking people into saying, look, buy a ticket, come here. And I think the first person, the, the first time people would have known that's, you know, this was all a big lie was maybe when they walked into the gas chambers, you know, the last few moments of their life. So but I think for me, what one of the saddest things for me, and maybe it, it's with having children, is, again, you go on those different blocks which you mentioned, and one of the blocks was, you know, it was almost a bit of an experimental block. And they're taking, you know, young children, young girls mm. into these blocks and doing medical experiments on them and just just doing you, you, things you can't even possibly imagine. I heard one of them said they injected petrol into the veins at one point. Yeah, pregnant women. And it's like, you know, young girls, you just think, well, I just think as a, as a dad, imagine I was in one of the rooms going through my own trauma and you know you've got kids there who you just, it's it beggars belief what must have been going through people's minds. And I think that for me, just when, when you started seeing the kids' shoes and listening about what was happening to the kids as well, it just, um, I think everyone was like you, by the way, thought, I've heard enough now, I've seen enough. Mm. I think because it was, it just seemed to get worse and worse. And I go back to what I said at the start, I very naively thought people turned up and they got gassed. Some people were living there for two or three years, you mm. know, living in the worst conditions. 300 calories a day they got. <laughs> and do you know what? <laughs> you talk about perspective. What I thought was crazy is I'm walking around. It was quite cold today, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I've got three layers on, a hood on, a hat, and I was I was shivering. And I was thinking, bloody hell, I'm freezing. And then you're listening to the conditions these people were living in, walking around in a linen shirt, and that was it. Expected to work every hour God sends um, on, what, 300 calories a day. Mm. And it does give you that perspective to think, right, Andy, stop moaning. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Things have happened here which, you know, you cannot moan about being a little bit cold today. I had a massive bubble coat on and I was freezing. Yeah. And it, it was, because you walk around it for about an hour and a half, and about an hour in, I was thinking, I'm freezing, to the point where it, was, it, it wasn't just cold, it was uncomfortably cold, I thought where ordinarily he'd moan. And in my head, I was moaning. And then I just thought, you know, don't even, how dare you mm. even contemplate moaning about being cold with base layers on, mm. bubble coats on, 
And though, to think that those people were working in them conditions. By the way, this was okay. It's November, but it's not. It's not. You know, January it gets February. worse. Yeah, so <laughs> it gets like minus ten, minus twenty, I think, here at some point. And you think they've got a linen uni pair of pants and a linen shirt and three hundred calories and all the other things. By the way, malaria and typhoid, and I think they said seven people sharing a bed. Mm. What one blanket? And you just like. It's mind blowing. I think the thing you can't replicate as well, thankfully not. But I always used to think of the noise, the noises that would have been going on each day. Do you know what I mean? The screams and the you know people in agony, the groans and you know the sadness. You, you know, the, hearing those things and the smells. You know, you can't even imagine. But one thing I was going to ask you is, there was a bit of me today where, as as the day was finishing up, I felt a bit of guilt and I thought. It's okay having perspective today now, and I, I feel so grateful to sit here, you know, mm. being in a safe, you know, nice hotel with a beer, you know, with my friends, and it's, you know, I feel so grateful. I wonder how long that will last, though, that feeling of, you know, snap. thinking back to them. Snap. Because that's what I've been thinking all day. I've been thinking, there was a point where we were shivering. And I could see there was about 10 of us in our group and everybody was cold. And I'm thinking, don't dare moan now. You know, you've got to have perspective. Basically, there was a, po a point where I thought, you don't really have bad days, do you? Mm. You know, in comparison to what it, what on earth has gone on here, you just don't have bad days, Paul. So understand that. And then I got guilty and thought, well, I do understand that right now. Maybe tomorrow. But what about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? And if it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, what about two weeks on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? How long is it going to be before it wears off? And I felt guilty. Yeah, same. And I think that's gonna that's the struggle, I think, for everyone. It's to have that, to try and maintain that perspective. Because, like you say, if you go through your way, I could go through my worst day, it'd either be, you know, probably losing my mum or getting blown up. If you could go back to anyone in any of those concentration camps and say, look, we're taking out of this shit all and you're going to have to go through losing your mum as a kid. <laughs> Every single well, they all did, didn't they? Well, yeah. So that was a, that so was that's, 100%. That, that's a given it, anyway. Right? Yeah. You say, look, you've got to get blown up, but then you've got to get looked after by the best doctors in the world. You still want to... They're all doing it. So my worst mm. day, mm. they'd all bite me hand off for it. Mm. So it just shows you that there isn't, like you say, there is no worst, you know, no such thing as a bad day in comparison to them. And I think... That for me, what I've took a lot from today is the big is the big challenges. Next time I am kind of wrapped up in my own in my own world and you know, feeling like everything's against me and feeling like I can't catch a break and feeling a bit sorry for myself. And maybe I might have a, a bit of reason for that, you know, maybe things aren't going my way, but it's to get that keep that maintain that perspective, think back to the day, have a little moment to myself and realise, look, you know what, things could be a hell of a lot worse. Mm. And I think that's that'll be the challenge for everyone to, to to try and remember that. That's why I think people should come here. I think there's a million reasons why people should come here, but I think that is one good solid reason um, to create that level of perspective. The part that really got to me, the second part that got to me, is the smiles on the faces on the pictures. Yes. The fact that they actually made everybody get stripped naked and told them they was going, they'd just been on a long journey and they was now getting given a shower. Part of that gate okay, actually gives you a bit of comfort. It gave me a bit of comfort as well, actually, because nobody knew what they was coming to, so at least they didn't know, but they did know at the end, and I'm sure they said that the actual chambers took like half an hour. I mean... Yeah, it's... Um, I get so many emotions as well, by the way, going through at, at different moments. One thing as well, what kind of angered me, and you, you talk about, like, you know, especially through you and what you've created, that's to do on be the standard, sort of what, you know, models and expecting the best of yourself. A lot of these SS officers who worked in these concentration camps were almost given a choice. You know, you can either go and fight the war on the front line or you can work in these camps and this is what you're going to do. Now, do you reckon there was about 8,000 soldiers who worked in these camps and only ever 10% of them were brought to justice? Which makes you think there's 7,000 odd, you mm -hmm. know, people who who took part in these war crimes, who went on to live the rest of their lives, you know, after the war had finished, knowing what they'd been through and knowing that they chose to inflict this suffering as opposed to fighting on the front line. 
and it makes you think about your own sometimes choices in life. Mm. You know, how often have you chose the easy thing or have you chose the right thing? Uh. And I think that that in itself is massive. You know, next time you've got a decision to make, it's like, am I doing the selfish thing here or am I going to do something that's a bit harder because it's the right thing to do? Mm. You know, and I guess the right thing would be to, when you're getting given these orders, this is what we do. That room, we put them in to starve them. That room, we put them in to gas them. I wonder how many, if, if any, officers said, I'm not comfortable with that. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I think, because I think me and Neil were talking on the, on the way home, it's like, there was one point, one story that if someone gave birth at Auschwitz, they'd literally inject a woman um, afterwards with poison straight into the heart, get the baby and drown it. Neil said to me, you know, you could offer me the chance of, you know, curing world hunger to do that. I couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. The world would have to stay yeah, hungry. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it makes you think back to decisions that you have to make in your own life. You're always doing the right thing or you're doing the easy thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. When you go to Birka now, I mean, so, so so the main memorial site, I think, is obviously at Auschwitz, but Birka now is just Auschwitz times, I don't even know how many. It's just absolutely massive. And you go through them gates where the trains come in and the trains just literally stop yes. where the gas chambers are. And the and the women and the kids virtually just get off and go for a shower and it's and it's done. Mm. And any bloke that they think looks weak is done and the rest of them they keep to do the work. And it's just massive, Andy. Mm. And it, it, you just think I think they said they were sick. What what I thought was remarkable, which annoys me, and I had a lot of anger in certain instances through the day. Imagine how slick they got the pro, how how well they fought it yeah. through, to get the processes so slick yeah. to create such misery and harm. Mm. Imagine if we actually created the same thought, feelings, and processes behind doing good, mm. what we could actually do, mm. rather than making it slick so they could effectively exterminate. 6,000 people a day, which is what they were doing. I can't get my head around it. It's a great point, isn't it? Because you think all that time and energy that's went into creating this death camp where over a million people were killed and tortured, etc. You imagine that same energy and togetherness for, like you say, making good in the world. We'd all be flying, wouldn't we? Imagine. You know what I mean? Imagine. And, and the sad thing is, you know, we're meant to learn from these things and you look what's going on now you know, in the Middle East, in Israel and Palestine. It's, we're not learning, are we? No. Do you know what I mean? And that's the other really sad thing. And, um, yeah, there's just been so many emotions today. Um, yeah. Coming back to your point about doing the right thing, we was at Schindler's factory mm. yesterday. And I think Schindler's List is a, like a film for everyone. It's phenomenal. But, it was amazing what he did, saving 1,200 lives by doing the right thing that could have really could have ended his life at any point in time. Well, I didn't know he was started off, didn't he, as a spy for the Nazis. He was kind of working right. for them. And I think what the, what I, I took a photo of, of one of the signs at the end and it said, you know, everyone's got a chance to change. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, it's right that, you know, and if you're ever sitting there on a, you know, we get loads of messages from the live cast and, People have maybe it's give them a bit of a kick up the arse, and it's like one thing I got from that factory that the museum tour was, you know, yeah, you might not have always made the right decisions or done the right things by yourself, by your family, by work, but you can change. You, you know, you can start making mm. the right decision. That, mm. And um, Schindler ends up saving over a thousand um, Jews at the end. So it's it's that thing, like you, you know, you can change if you mm. want to wake up in the morning yeah. and think, right, that's enough's enough. Yeah. I want to start putting foundations into place to make a better life myself you know you can change yeah it's a great point that. so i think my point today that i've took from it massively is if you think you're having a bad day you're really not yeah. that's the thing i've got from today and i'm praying for my own self that that when the chips are down when the when when you're tempted to go into default of whinging and moaning and woe is me or I am, I'm just praying that what I've learned today stays strong enough in my mind 
and I, and I hope we've got into enough detail even on this podcast where people can think realistically it's not mm. I haven't actually had a bad day yeah. it's it, it, it the, 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 what we think is a bad day we're saying this again we got we got a coffee before and I don't know what today was freezing and to me I'm trying to take what's been in whilst also think I'm freezing Buzz. And then I thought, I bet that was number 123 on their list of problems that day. And that's what kind of gave me perspective. And I hope that if there's somebody's listening, we've been able to convey mm. to people that haven't been what it's like so that they can take that. And um, you imagine, right, how cold it was. Imagine having that much fear going through your head. You don't even feel the cold. That's what it would have been. Yeah. You're not even acknowledging it's minus two. You're that petrified of everything else coming. Of up. everything else, malaria, typhoid, tetanus, no sa- no sanitary, no. I mean, the, guy, the Nazis there in those uniforms with guns on the hips and these factory, and you're seeing it. You, it's fucking... overwhelming fences that if you touch them, you, you know. So that's my overwhelming thing for the day. Is that what? What's yours? will end on that. Well, I think for number one, I think that probably will end up being a thing that me and you, you know, will end up texting each other and say, look, remember, bit of yeah. perspective over the months. I think I think mine will be similar. Um, and I think to try and always, I think I'll probably go back to the point I made then, to try and in my life, you know, do the right thing. Because I think it's so easy to to kind of almost just fall in line and do that. I'd, I'd like to think of, you know, of having models to, to, to do the right thing. Do you know what I mean? Not always what's easy, not always because you, but it's it's the, the morally the right thing to do, um, because there's no doubt the way people along the line who who done the right thing shouldn't left for one of them, um, and I just try and have the courage and conviction because the suffering that have went on from people, and um, because people did just you know toe the line, you know try and try and be the person who you know who who done the right thing when it was needed, but but like you as well. It's 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 that perspective thing to know that when you think you are having a bad day, listen, it, it can get a hell of a lot worse. And 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 remember what remember what we've done, and, and and just I don't even think it needs to be something to take forward. It's just almost of acknowledgement of just sad for people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's a weird feeling, isn't it? It's, it is. It's and I hundred percent recommend anybody who's contemplating should I go, shouldn't I? To to go. Yeah, not hundred percent. Um, I don't think we knew what this live cast was going to be about because no. I think we're both we've we spoke about it on the way home then over a beer and it's like and we probably will continue to speak about it for the next days and weeks but yeah I think if you ever get the chance to come here and visit I think you definitely should um, and hopefully we've given you a bit of an insight into what it's like and hopefully you can believe us when we say you know about that perspective and, and knowing how things can get next time you're having a bad day. Hope you've enjoyed this live cast and we'll see you next week.